I would like to welcome our first speaker this evening, Dr. Joelle Claveau, who is a dermatologist specialized in the diagnosis and treatment of melanoma and skin cancers. He is also an associate professor with the Department of Medicine at Laval University, where he completed his medical study and internal medicine training. He did his residency in dermatology at McGill University and subsequently worked at the Melanoma Clinic at the Royal Victoria Hospital in Montreal, Quebec. Since 1996, he has been the director of the Melanoma and Skin Cancer Clinic at Le Centre Hospitalitier Universitaire, Hotel du du Québec, and worked in public health for the province of Quebec, especially on the new tanning bed legislation. He participated in the publication of papers in peer-reviewed journals, including work on melanoma, skin cancers, and sunscreens. He is actively involved in various continu continuing medical education events and investigator in many clinical trials on advanced and metastatic melanoma. So please welcome Dr. Joël Clavo. Hello, everyone. I'm happy to uh, share with you um, a few aspects about the melanoma diagnosis and biopsy today. Um, I work at Melanoma Clinic in uh, Quebec City with uh, my group of colleagues. I'm very fortunate to work with a fantastic group of, uh, of uh, nurses and physicians. Uh, pathologists, of course, uh, surgeon and oncologists. So the outline of my presentation will be a small introduction and uh, talk about the epidemiology of melanoma. Of course, when uh, uh, you get to see your uh, dermatologist or physician, we have different aspects to look for when we want to make the diagnosis of melanoma. In dermatology, we use what we call the dermoscope. I'll just briefly uh, tell you what it is. Probably if you have had the diagnosis of melanoma, probably the physician have used a special magnifying glass we call dermoscope to help us. And basically today we will concentrate on different uh, biopsy techniques that we are using uh, to give a good specimen to the pathologist. Of course, the pathologist is key in the diagnosis of melanoma. Often we have specialized pathologists in our uh, hospital. hospital either dermatopathologists or pathologists with special interest in the skin. And finally, after Dr. Redpath talk on the topic, I will come back and just tell you briefly how we announce and share the diagnosis with our patient. This is uh, not great to have uh, three blonde kids on the beach like that. Um, even though they're smiling, it's not great for us because this is summarizing every uh, risk factor for melanoma. So uh, usually melanoma um, after sunburn in a child, usually blonde or red hair, uh, blue eyes. Um, of course, if you are more south, if you live near, uh, let's say in Florida and uh, in California, uh, in Australia and country where you are closer to the uh, equator, you have more chance to burn. But even though for us, north, northern country, uh, when we are exposed to sun and we have a lot of uh, nevi, mole, history of skin cancer, those are risk for melanoma. Unfortunately, we see a big raise in melanoma. Those are slides from my friend, Dr. Regal from New York. And you see now for people uh, um, that are born in around 2020-2023, they have one chance out of 45 to develop a melanoma. And in the 30s, 50s was one in a thousand. So really, we see a big rise in the melanoma. And if we uh, add inside to melanoma, which is an, a melanoma which is thin, most uh, I would say like more than one third of the melanoma those days. If we uh, look at the diagnosis, is is uh, they are inside two. So one chance out of 26 to develop a melanoma for a kid born 2023. Most of the melanoma are diagnosed around uh, age 60. Often, uh, yes, if you have had melanoma and you are young, uh, it's a cancer that can uh, also affect young population, maybe between like uh, 20 and 40, but most of the time it's around 60 to 65. Just briefly, before we talk about the uh, diagnosis, the biopsy types, I will explain the different way to make a clinical diagnosis. For us clinician, the main types of uh, melanoma uh, and the more frequent of melanoma is superficial spreading and it arises in a patient like this one that has many moles. So when you have many moles, 
you are at high risk to develop melanoma, especially if you have had sunburns. And part of those moles you see in, in, on this back, many nevi, but a few lesions, especially this uh, uh, black circle, but also in the center where you have like thicker and bigger lesion, they can be the sign of an early melanoma developing in a patient with multiple mole. Dermatologists, we have a tool we call Dermascope. So it's really a magnifying glass, uh, magnifying uh, a light, polarized light also, that uh, gave us like 10 uh, to 20 times uh, bigger uh, vision, but also we see under the skin. So throughout my presentation, I'll show you a few slides of the Moscow. And for making the diagnosis, we have different algorithms. I don't want, of course, to go into detail in this, but just to tell you that we teach dermatologists, we teach dermatology resident, medical student, different uh, aspects of this important tool that we have right now to diagnose melanoma. Those are all benign nevi on top. And this is uh, si those are signs of melanoma. So when we look at the suspicious lesion on the uh, body of somebody, we uh, use those signs to diagnose melanoma. And then it will lead to uh, decide what, uh, if we will do a biopsy. So, of course, on this back, this is very suspicious. When I use my dermoscope, I know right away, even without a biopsy, this is a superficial spreading melanoma with a thick invasive component. It's blue-white veil in the center. It has a blue-white veil. It has white streaks. We call white shiny streaks. And even on the left side, we see an ulcer. So I can tell the pathologist that I suspect an ulcer and it will guide them in, di in their diagnosis pathologically. Those are the types of clinical melanoma. The most frequent 70% of melanoma are called superficial spreading melanomas. This is a very good example of a, a patch on the arm of this woman. This is the classic ABCD sign, asymmetry, irregular border, many colors including black, and diameter more than one centimeter. And if I use my dermoscope, I see the asymmetry, the disorganization, and this is really an early melanoma. So the dermatologist now, we use our eye, but also we use this lamp, this magnifying glass we call dermoscope. The second big type of melanoma, often we've seen too many of those during COVID with big thick melanomas coming to see us. This is called nodular melanoma. Nodular melanomas have, uh, usually they come later. This is a bad melanoma with ulceration and unfortunately this patient had metastasis in both axillae. This is 20 years ago and the patient is doing well, so it's a great news for him and us, but this was a lot of uh, surgery and also treatment later on. Another type that we talk less often about is the lentigo maligna, which is the melanoma on the face. This is a, a black patch on the chin. It's not normal to have this. And again, with my dermoscope, I see it's suspicious. So this is a type of melanoma we see on the face. Slow growing, small, uh, like takes more time to develop uh, invasive uh, cancer, but it's also a melanoma. Finally, we can have melanoma on palms and soles. This is not because the patient walk on oil on the beach, but this is a uh, also melanoma. That's the the type Bob Marley died, and same thing with the toenail or can be the finger uh, nails. This is a, not a fungus. This is a melanoma of the nail. And of course, in a case like that, will be more difficult to do biopsy. Often we will need to do biopsy after we remove the nail plate. So going to the main part of the topic, when you see your doctor and they suspect the melanoma, there's two big category of biopsy you can have. I do, they will decide to remove completely the melanoma, which is usually the best way because you will have all the criteria for diagnosis. Or maybe they will decide to do a partial biopsy, a punch, uh, or a shave. We will review those types of biopsy. But the main one is to do a complete biopsy. 
So the ideal way, like I've seen three new melanomas today, I explained the patient they will come in a week or two and I will remove the melanoma with this ellipse. Uh, we want to have a, maybe one or two millimeter of normal skin around and we will suture that in, uh, let the patient quiet for two weeks, remove the, the sutures and then we'll have the diagnosis of melanoma. This is really the number one uh, technique that we prefer to diagnose melanoma. Sometimes we're lucky. We have a very small melanoma, three, four, five millimeters. So we will be able to do a punch removal. So this is a, an example of an eight millimeter punch. So we suspect a small melanoma in a patient with many moles and we will do the punch around it to make the diagnosis. Finally, for the complete biopsy, another technique will be to do a shave. We call deep shave, saucerization. Advantage is fast and quick. So this, this patient uh, with melanoma in the back before he wants to go to Florida, he's leaving in three days. I have no time to bring him back for complete ellipse. So I said, okay, we'll do a compromise. This is very typical dermoscopy. And then by uh, using a special blade, sterilized razor blade, we will go under the melanoma and do what we call a shave biopsy with no sutures, no stitches. The disadvantage of this technique is if we are too sh uh, shallow, we can cut through the melanoma. So that's why in textbook like this, like books for dermatologists, we explain if you do a shave, it has to be deep enough to make sure we remove everything or the good diagnosis for the pathologist. Finally, in special situation, particularly, particularly for me, I really prefer to excise everything, but if I have no choice, occasionally we'll do an incisional partial biopsy. Of course, I see this woman in my office. It's a big, large lesion, three uh, centimeter or two centimeter, then what I will decide is just do a partial biopsy of the most suspicious part, and it will be easier for me to suture, not having uh, the necessar necessarily do the complete excision right away in that case. Finally, if you have a lesion on the face, of course you, will, you don't want to do the big surgery right away, so this is really suspicious for lentigo maligna on the face, and in dermoscopy, you see in the center, this is really classic for diagnosis of melanoma. But then what I will decide, maybe I will do just a small shave, remove a three millimeter, maybe in this dark area, make the diagnosis, and then or later on operate the patient. This is the Margaret's topic. She's gonna tell you um, that pathologists are king and queen. They can make the diagnosis by looking at the slides. And in a case like that, it was a diagnosis of lentigo maligna made by my pathologist. So finally, just telling you what is important is communication with the pathologist. Clinical uh, pathological communication, good clinical information. We have to dis, uh, describe the precise uh, location of the lesion, the diameter, and the type of biopsy we've done, like I just explained you, partial or complete, is it an ellipse, a punch, or a shave? I can say enough about my pathologists. They're so important to my practice. I speak with them every day. They are fantastic. And uh, Dr. Redpath is a great example of a great dermatopathologist in Montreal, the Jewish General Hospital. She will tell you about the pathological diagnosis of melanoma.